in this bulletin, four police officers suspended pending further investigation into the death of robbery suspect Vilike Sosoko. Multinational Observer Group for Fijian Elections start groundwork. And police confirm persons depicted in YouTube video being shot at far out at sea are not Fijian nationals. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. Four police officers have been suspended with immediate effect pending further investigation into the death of robbery suspect Vilike Sosoko last Wednesday. Shireen Lata reports. In a statement this afternoon, Police Commissioner Ben Honewal says he will not release the identities of officers as the criminal investigation is ongoing and all evidence cannot be discussed publicly. However, he says those involved will be subjected to the full force of law and once investigation is completed, the findings will be passed to the Director of Public Prosecution's Office. He is stressing to the public and especially to Soko's family that they are leaving no stone unturned in getting to the bottom of what happened and see that all those responsible are brought to justice. Meanwhile, Soko was laid to rest today. His family and friends gathered at his home in Kalambu housing for the final farewell. His father, Jeremiah Soko, says he will be taking legal action against the Fiji police force. Sharin Lata, FBC News. The multinational observer group for the Fiji election says it's committed to the job at hand. A secretariat has been set up in Suva to coordinate what's expected to be a fairly large observer group for the September polls. Edwin Nunn reports an initial team of observers is already on the ground. Fifteen countries will be sending representatives as part of the multinational observer group, each of whom will be putting their name on the final report. Coordinator Andrew Golitzinowski says none of the observers have any doubts on what is required of them. It's about providing confidence. It's about not just the international community's confidence in what is happening in Fiji. It's about providing some level of confidence to the Fijian voting public that, in fact, this election will be um, as good as it can be in terms of uh, its uh, integrity and effectiveness. The Observer Group began its work on the 18th of this month taking note of the close of party nominations, the draw of candidate numbers and the court case over the weekend. Golet Zanowski admits it's impossible to be at every polling station speaking to every voter, but the observer team will be large enough to cover a vast area of Fiji. We want to be as broad as we can. We want to cover the majority of polling stations and we want to cover uh, the majority of, uh, of, of, of environments within Fiji, um, the maritime areas, uh, the interior, even where there are fewer people. I think everyone has to be able to see that we're, we're, we're doing our best to, to make sure that um, their impressions, their views and their experiences somehow reflected in, in our report. More observers will start arriving in the coming days and will be briefed by the Secretariat on what's required of them. We will be looking at how the polling stations are established. We will be looking at how um, the ballot papers are printed, how uh, ballot boxes are managed. Uh, the transportation of these materials is very important uh, to ensure the integrity of the process. Um, and then, of course, on the actual election day, there's a whole range of activities which will require um, monitoring by us. And we have a very broad mandate in the terms of reference to go anywhere in Fiji, to speak with anyone uh, as, as we think is, is appropriate. The MOG confirms right from the outset they haven't had any issues with regards to access and freedom to observe the elections preparations. Edwin Nand, FBC News. The September 17th elections will have over 10,000 political party scrutineers. Scrutineers or poll watchers observe the counting of ballot papers in order to check the election rules are followed. Minister responsible for elections, Ayasai Kayum, says this is a requirement by each political party to see how the elections process is carried out. So if a political party wants to have a representative of each of the polling stations, I understand the final figures are yet to be finalized. It's somewhere between 1,800 to 2,000 polling stations. So each political party will have one at each polling station. So you multiply, you do the mathematics. If there are 2,000 uh, party scrutineers, uh, multiply that by seven, you have 14,000 scrutineers. So you have 14,000 observers in any case. And those scrutineers will be watching how people vote. Those scrutineers will be watching how ballot boxes are open and how ballots are counted. 
The general elections are scheduled for the 17th of September with polls scheduled to open at 7.30 a.m. till 6 p.m. Fiji First Leader Vorenge Mbani Marama says the decision to hold one-day polling for the September elections is to avoid fraud in the voting process. Mbani Marama was questioned by Fijians living in Sydney over the weekend during a Talanor session on how the new election process will work for Fiji. You can you know we're going to have the, the election in one day. Yeah, one day, one day election. A lot of people have said that we can't win because of the numbers that we have. The Indonesia does it in one day. They have 120 million people. Or 100,000 islands. If they can do it in one day, I don't know why I think you can't do it in one day. But we do it one day for one simple reason. Because of fraud and rigging that has happened in the past. That has happened in the past. By the time it takes, it should take seven days uh, to do uh, a polling. By the time the polling box gets from Kandam to Suba, it has changed. Bani Marama was in Sydney to campaign amongst Fijians living there and also fundraise for his party. The Social Democratic Liberal Party will contest their elections with only 48 candidates. This after the last minute withdrawal of candidate Carl Smith. Sidelpa so General Secretary Pio Tambaiwalu today confirmed the Vanua level based Smith voluntarily withdrew his candidacy for personal reasons. But uh, a bit late. <laughs> uh, regrettably. Uh, he notified us uh, the day after we submitted, so we could not uh, put in another name. Eh? Uh, yes, I think he had uh, family uh, issues, so yes, but uh, we can deal with them. The other candidate that was dropped from the party list was Anare Chale, whose nomination was not approved by the elections office. Fiji's Ministry of Health has issued a travel advisory to caution Fijians against traveling to West Africa due to the outbreak of Ebola there. All Fijian citizens are advised against non-essential travel to Guinea, Sierra Leone, Liberia and Nigeria until further notice. This follows the advice of the World Health Organization after it declared an international public health emergency to prevent the spread of the disease. The ministry also wants to reassure the people of Fiji that to date there have been no reported cases of Ebola in the South Pacific including Fiji. The Fiji Police Force has confirmed that the persons depicted in a YouTube video being shot at far out at sea are not Fijian nationals. Police Commissioner Ben Hunaval says, following a thorough investigation, it's been established that the video was shot outside of Fiji waters and involved a confrontation between Asian fishing crews and pirates somewhere in the Indian Ocean. Information gathered from the Maritime Safety Authority of Fiji and Telecommunication Authority of Fiji also confirms the vessel shown in the video has never entered Fijian waters. Still to come on FBC News, video of Fijian dancing traffic officer goes viral on social media sites. Just joined us on the system after dark. This is a homegrown number courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. Welcome back, this is FBC News. A fire completely destroyed a temple and an adjoining hall that is used for weddings and other functions at Lakena Hill No. 1 in Aosori. Spokesperson Avikash Chan says the fire destroyed musical instruments and other items inside the temple, as well as equipment stored in the hall. The fire started at about 10 a.m. today. The Sri Vishnu Lakshmi Temple, which was built in 1963, attracts about 200 devotees to major prayers on the Hindu calendar held at the site. 31 young teachers from around the country are learning to become leaders in their schools in the future. The week-long training is being held in Suva. Rashika Kumar has the details. The roles have been reversed for these teachers from both primary and secondary schools. This week they are not the teachers but the students in the future leadership workshop. 
The training is an ongoing program for the Education Ministry to develop its human resources. With this uh, retirement age of 55, when our, teach, uh, when our school heads are going out, we ensure that we have adequately trained our teachers to take up the positions in the schools. Teachers were specifically selected by their respective district staff to participate in the workshop. We are moving towards making Fiji a smarter nation and a smarter nation can only come when we have got smarter administrators, when we have got smarter teachers. Uh, when I say smarter administrators, we have got smarter principals, vice principal, assistant principals, and we have smarter teachers. I will be able to uh, get myself involved with uh, the team of uh, uh, teachers at school and uh, where I'm going to be uh, placed uh, upon the selection of the Ministry of Education. Being a better deliverance as far as the uh, leadership is concerned, uh, we should be able to better communicate with the teachers, uh, we should be able to make a good teamwork. The items on the agenda is the National Curriculum Framework. The framework was reviewed and implemented this year and officers from the Curriculum Development Unit will be discussing the changes with the participants of the workshop. Similar workshops will be done in the Western, Northern and Eastern Division. Rashka Kumar, FBC News. Fijians are one of the friendliest people in the world. This is a well-known commodity in the tourism industry. This week, a video about a security officer on Denarau Island has gone viral on social media sites portraying the message of how happy Fijians are. Christopher Chand reports. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. It's this video on YouTube uploaded three days ago that is becoming popular with more than 6,000 views and comments from people around the world. Suliasi Koroiwada has brought a whole new meaning to controlling traffic on Denarau. It's a part of working and a part of uh, our service in uh, Denarau. So I never believe, I never, it's come on my mind, it's uh, just uh, automatically come for me to do that kind of work when it's happening on the, doing traffic control. Koroiwada's dancing partner is William Vave. The pair have created an everlasting impression for tourists heading in and out of Denarau. The reason we do that to entertain the, the tourists come here to Denarau Island. Interestingly, Koroiwada resigned yesterday after being offered another job by a tourist operator who passed him on the bridge every day. The security firm has brought in another person who has not let them down. Myself. By looking at my partner on the other side of the bridge, once you do some uh, move, some oogie boogie move, I also conduct some oogie boogie move, that's why we got the electrician flowing and that's why we do the dancing while controlling traffic. So you call it the oogie boogie move? Yep. The Indianara oogie boogie move, security oogie boogie moves. Discover Travel Channel filmed the video last Friday and since then it has reached the global audience. Our Facebook page, we've had uh, 145 shares, so he's all over the world. People are sharing in the States and in all different countries. And um, it's amazing. He just makes people happy. It's putting a smile on people's faces that gives the dancing security officers the satisfaction in the work that they do. So the next time you're in Denarau, don't forget to give them a loud cheer. Christopher Chand, FBC News. Great story there and on that note, Jamie joins you now with the latest in sports. Good evening, after the break, Ben Ryan starts work for upcoming 7 Series and Suva out to end 19-year drought at BOG. Details coming up. Great words there from Lucky Dube and Babana. Hope you enjoyed that number, different colours just for you on Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Ruby is with you on the center show. Well, thank you so much for the sweet company. This is Alana Miles, one of my favorites, and Black Velvet for you. Hi there. Join me on the center show every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. for the best sounds on Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Welcome back to FBC Sports. Vodafone Fiji 7's coach Ben Ryan has set the wheels in motion to prepare a squad for the new IRB World Series. A fitness test was held in Suva today for the Central Base players 
With a few familiar faces turning up to fight for a spot in the national side, Tsalein Daudakadaka reports. 17 players turned up this morning to prove their worth to Fiji 7's coach Ben Ryan. Amongst the players were new and old faces who all want a shot at playing in the IRB World Series. I guess some of them will have ideas of making a comeback. Um, I mean, I've wanted to cast my, my net wide really and give everyone a chance at the start of the season. Um, and from there I'll, I'll cut the squad down next week. So you know, I see what appetite they've got to really, you know, it's one thing talking in the papers and saying, yeah, I'm keen to play again. I'm going to give it everything and actually seeing whether they are or not. Ryan says there is no guarantee the 13 survivors from last season will get the call up. You never own the jersey, you're only you know, temporarily there and it's up to you to keep it. But the boys that finished strongly in London and Glasgow, obviously it's, it's, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're in a good position and they need to just uh, show over the next few weeks that they're still in the form they were last year. Um, and it will make it very hard then for others to, to get them out of the, the team. But I'm still going to pick on form. Another test will be held tomorrow morning at the HPU gym in Singatoka for the West-based players. The national squad's first international outing will be the Oceania 7s in Australia on the 3rd and 4th of October with the Gold Coast 7s a week later. Tsalendo Dakadak, FBC Sports. The last round of pool games for the Tekkers Secondary School's basketball championships take place tomorrow in Suva. In the under-19s, schools in both the boys' and girls' grades are trying to rack up points to progress to the quarterfinals to be played on Thursday. Meanwhile, in, in the under-15 and under-17 divisions, the top four teams will go straight to semi-final knockouts. After two days of competition, yet Saints Secondary is the team to beat in the boys' under-15, while Latter-day Saints and Gospel High School look impressive in the girls' under-15. In the under-17s, LDS and Marist are the informed boys' teams, while the girls' under-17 grade has been dominated by LDS. Netball Fiji is now preparing for build-up matches ahead of the 2015 World Cup. Following the national championships on Saturday, coach Kate Carpenter will begin preparations for a busy season ahead of the world meet. The side is also looking at playing games against top clubs in Australia and New Zealand. Chock a block of a season, we've got about um, five test matches before the, the World Cup, including a, a tour of New Zealand and Australia to play uh, the NZ franchise teams. The 2015 World Cup will be played in Australia next August. In the last two years, the Super Football side has managed to win all major football titles except for the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants. The Whites are now hard at work preparing for the semi-finals this weekend with an ultimate aim to end its 19-year drought at the BOG. Indra Singh has more. Back on the training ground for the Suva football side after winning all its pool games last weekend, the onus is now on the team to continue that momentum. i got a good set of boys, so it's always tough to pick the best. But uh, it's a good thing that we got depth on the bench. A further boost for the side with rugged defender Noah Vukida given the all clear to resume training after sustaining an injury last weekend. We got injury, Noah Vukida, but uh, he started training today. He'll be doing light training and hopefully he'll be okay for the semi final. Under the guidance of Singh, Suva has won the FACT and IDC titles, but the BOG crown has been elusive. In fact, the last time the Whites won this title was way back in 1995. I know all the four teams are looking forward to win this BOG, so we are also preparing well to win this first BOG tournament. Suva takes on Rewa in the first semi-final at 3 p.m. on Saturday at the ANZ Stadium, while Lotoka battles defending champions Bar at 5 p.m. The Whites know they have overcome the first hurdle away from home and will be hoping the unbeaten run continues. Interesting, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Fiji Football Association has named a new referees director to replace the outgoing Paresh Kishore. Rajni Kant Sharma has been appointed to the position and has already started his duties with the Fiji FA. We have replaced uh, 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 Rajni Kant Sharma, uh, commonly known as RK. He's been a former teacher and everything and been involved in the referees. He's a uh, uh, very veteran in referees department and also uh, knowledge of football has been there for years. He's been a referees assessor and uh, this is very positive for us. He's uh, we needed somebody who will look after the academy and also the referees the director position. So this fits in well with us and with his qualifications and everything. So he was the right choice for the academy. Kisho is migrating to the United States and has been involved with Fiji FA for over three years. 
And that was your sports for tonight. Jack is up next with business. <laughs> Amalgamated Telecom Holdings and its group of companies have recorded an interim and unaudited consolidated net profit after tax and minority interest of $8.9 million. The amount was recorded for the first quarter ended June 30th this year compared to the consolidated net after tax profit and minority interest of $5 million for the same period last year. This is the result of increased earnings from subsidiary companies. There were sunny and cool conditions just about everywhere today. Only Suva and Savo Savo had some cloudy periods and brief showers. Temperatures Suva and Savo Savo recorded the lowest on our temperature chart today, hitting 26 degrees. Lautoka and Bar recorded 29 degrees and Nandi and Lombasa hit 28 degrees. Forecast for tomorrow, Savo Savo and Suva might have a mixed bag with cloudy skies in the morning and fair conditions with brief showers in the afternoon. The rest of the centers, a chance of fair conditions all day. For Mariners, a strong wind warning remains in force for all Fiji waters. East to southeast winds 20 to 25 knots and rough seas. Now recapping our headlines for tonight. Four police officers suspended pending further investigation into the death of robbery suspect Vilikesa Soko. Multinational Observer Group for Fijian elections start groundwork and police confirm persons depicted in YouTube video being shot at far out at sea are not Fijian nationals. Now time for the Fijian Speak segment. Educations that uh, it should be improved, you no know, like uh, scholarship. Uh, most uh, students they don't have a scholarship; eh? they are going on the private. One free education. Hope it remains free to all children. And secondly, that our land remains with us. That is okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And to receive the latest headlines on your mobile phone, take subspace FBC to 777. That's all from us tonight. Good evening. Sampai jumpa di FM